This is the end of the beginning. Welcome to today's show. This is absolutely frightening and sickening and many other emotions at the same time come out when you hear this story and stories like this. And obviously, for those of you who have followed me over the years, I've covered so many things involving topics specifically like this. But now we have an event that occurred in Maui where a fire was started by our own government. And on top of that, now we're hearing reports that over 2,000 children right now are unaccounted for in Lahaina Public Schools two weeks following the fire. And this is according to the Hawaii State Department of Education. This is not according to a TikToker. This is not according to Twitter. This is according to the Hawaii State Department of Education, who is documenting who's showing up in school and who isn't. So for anybody out there that tries to snoop, so we'll come out here and they'll try to say, well, we're fact checking this with our BS meter and we're going to just automatically deflect on any stories about it. Well, then maybe you should turn to the people you look up to the most, which is the government who are even admitting in Hawaii that over 2000 children have not shown up yet to school. Now, we all obviously have heard reports from so many people in Maui, so much so that even local media outlets have picked up on the story claiming that the numbers that they're giving in regards to the amount of people missing is nowhere near. In fact, the number seems to be edging closer to the amount of people that we lost on the 11th of September. Yet you don't hear this pumped and pushed as a national tragedy. Why? Well, too many people were too suspicious of what they saw with their own eyes. They're so suspicious that the government is afraid to even come out and talk about the climate, which you would think a situation like this might make them push their biggest propaganda news that they have right now, which is the climate agenda. In fact, they're not. They're remaining almost hush-hush on the topic. They even have Biden going there talking about his chef, uh, his uh, Corvette that he owns almost burning 30 years ago and not relating whatsoever to the trauma that people are going through. Why? Well, because the government doesn't care. Because if you look right in front of your faces, you realize the government are the ones who are doing this. Now, the 2,000 children who are unaccounted for, this is obviously a national tragedy. This is one of the most horrific things you could possibly think of. And obviously, for people like me and you who listen to this channel, our mind doesn't go to, well, 2,000 children burned in this horrible fire. Our mind goes to, that's interesting that that many children are missing, and you're reporting a number that's a lot less, and we know who lives on the island, and we know what our government does in regards to actual trafficking <clears throat> and what the CIA is really there to do and all of these secret agencies the government runs and coordinates. And of course, they like to pretend as always that the people who are into children are these people living in trailer parks or who look a certain way, who have no teeth, et cetera, et cetera. When in reality, it's, it's the guy who's representing you in Congress. This is all all tied into Aleister Crowley and satanic worship. They don't want you knowing that or thinking about that. But let's take a look at what's going on in Maui. Oh my God, I can't see anything. More than two weeks after fires destroyed the town of Lahaina, the total number of people still unaccounted for is rising. We don't want to leave any stone unturned, so we're considering everybody on that list until we can prove that they shouldn't be on that list. Overnight, eight more victims' identities revealed, nearly all of them in their 60s and 70s. Despite growing concern about how many children may have died, the FBI says no one on the list has a birth date of a minor. We've heard from parents who've said they've lost their kids. Do you think it's even possible that there's no minors on the list? How could there be this sort of conflicting information? Again, I rely, and our list, uh, our group of people that are going through the list relies on people to let us know. Uh, but we have other means of trying to figure out if minors were involved. For instance, we're working with the school system here in Maui to try to figure out where any kids uh, haven't shown up to school yet, that sort of thing. County leaders under intense scrutiny for the emergency response, as well as the pace of recovery and relief efforts, coming face to face for the first time with devastated residents in a public forum. We've lost our people, we've lost our homes, and for some, we've lost our purpose. The landlords who have the gumption to push evictions on their tenants right now do not care. Recovery teams have completed their search of single-story homes. Now they're focusing on commercial buildings and multi-level residences. 
Grandmother and great-grandmother Donna Gomes died in the place, just steps from her home. Her family says their matriarch had a huge heart. It brought, quote unquote, some closure to know that that was my mom because there are other families out there that still don't know. The cause of the fires still under investigation as officials say the recovery could take months, if not years. A critical next step, providing temporary housing such as these portable units for displaced families like Lindsay and Dusty Raynaud, who lost everything. Hope it will be a place where we can just find refuge and rebuild. And right now, officials are urging loved ones to provide DNA samples. They will automatically be compared to the samples that they have. They say that is the fastest way to get some closure in this heartbreaking process. So this is just one of the most heartbreaking things you could possibly hear, knowing that the government themselves, the Hawaii State Department of Education, is actually releasing a number that is 2,025 in total who remain unaccounted for within the Lahaina public school system following the deadly fire that swept through the town of Lahaina on August the 8th. So this far after, August 8th now, it's August 25th, as of me recording this, I might put it up on the 26th, but it's August 25th. And we still have seen this many people missing, and the number they're reporting is that much lower. Now, you could also look at other things that should make people suspicious, of course, such as the fact that they trap people in the town, that people who tried to flee Lahaina were turned away and forced to go back into the fire pit. All sorts of things that should make people scratch their heads and ask questions, yet we live in a period where nobody will do that anymore. And if somebody actually wants to look and say, well, where do you think these 2,000 kids are? They're going to say, well, they're probably all in the fire. Yeah. That's a little bit too convenient for a lot of us who know what these people uh, dabble in, I should say, in occult worship. Maybe check Oprah's basement. Why don't you go knock on Jeff Bezos' door over there? Hmm? How about any of the military underdown industrial complexes that they have there? Huh? Should we look there first, maybe? Because it seems like a lot of people are suspicious that this many children are missing and the number of people reported dead is around 100 from the mainstream media. So 100 people, that includes adults, are reported dead, but somehow over 2,000 children are missing, and we're supposed to believe this. So prior to the fire, the Lahaina School District comprised four educational institutions, two elementary schools, one intermediary school, and one high school. The collective enrollment was 3,001 students. Due to the extent of the fire damage, all four schools have been forced to close but they did just reopen. One elementary school has sustained significant destruction and is unlikely to reopen soon, while the other three schools experienced varying degrees of damage caused by high winds, debris, and soot. The report does not provide information on whether or not or to what extent many of the missing students may have perished in the fire. The report states as of August 21st, among the initial enrollment of 3,000 students on August 8th, 538 out of 3,001 have successfully re-enrolled in other public schools, while 438 have opted for enrollment in the state distance learning program, English and Hawaiian language immersion, addressing the remaining 2,025 missing students, the report specifies that they constitute the remainder of the students who have not re-enrolled in another public school or opted for distance learning. So, I mean, these are the types of things that should be the main focus on the news, right? I mean, why the news would it be talking about this? And the only thing they talk about with rebuilding is, you know, rebuilding it fast and rebuilding it, uh, you know, as a smart city for the most part. They don't really seem to care too much about the poor residents there who have been pretty much thrown out of their homes, had their homes set on fire, their family members set on fire, their pets set on fire. And nobody who's a Democrat seems to care. Maybe this would make people there start to uh, question uh, the government structure that's in place and the Communist Party that they voted for, even though their vote doesn't count, but they seem to support over in Hawaii. And again, if you aren't familiar with this stuff on how they operate, they create events like this and kids go missing and unaccounted for. What do you think FEMA is there for? Who do you think they're rounding up? These government, I mean, you think that they're there to hand out Poland spring water to these people? What do you think they're there to hand out some saltines to people who might have gotten out of the fire? As if those people actually want to even be there or want FEMA or the government's assistance at this point, since the government's already spat in their faces. And since most people there know the, government's, the government is the one who is behind this, they create events like this and kids just go missing. We've seen all these fronts for businesses 
right? Like Boys Town, the Franklin cover-up, if you're not familiar, I'll put a video up over there on the website, Uprising Revival, this week about it, which is very important that people become aware of these things. Obviously, I've covered McMartin a dozen times over, and I've covered the hidden tunnels underneath that have been filled in. So we know that with our tax money over the last 50, 60 years, they have built an underground city. If you don't think that that's a conspiracy, look it up for yourself. You can look out the Ozarks, you could look up, you know, what's under in Virginia. You can look at the whole country has an underground highway underneath it. Now the government will be like, oh yeah, we do. Well, why can't we ever see it or use it? Oh, well, it's for military operations. Well, that's very interesting. What military operation is happening underneath our feet? Shouldn't we be aware since our tax money's funding it? Because what happens underneath us is that these missing children go down there and they get sent all around the country to all different locations. And the locations they end up at are usually right at the home or a specific spot where conveniently a millionaire or a billionaire, a famous person or a politician happened to reside. So if I was in Maui, I would be sniffing around maybe Oprah's house, maybe Jim Carrey's house. I mean, Jim Carrey's got a home there. I've covered Jim Carrey a trillion times over. I mean, another YouTuber has who sounds very similar to me. A million times over with his role in Hollywood as the satanic high priest now in Hollywood, right? We've seen him do the mock Illuminati stuff all over, all the time, all the time in the news or on TV, I should say, on Jimmy Kimmel, etc. Right? He's got a home there. Maybe check there. Maybe check all these celebrities home because they're only celebrities and they only have the same political ideologies because they're all members of the same secret societies and they all worship Lucifer and the core thing that they do in Luciferian worship has to do with children. And it doesn't have to do with them playing Sega Genesis with kids. It doesn't have to do with them having a catch and playing baseball and teaching them how to swing a baseball bat with a kid. It has nothing to do with normal things that we think that these people would be engaging in. It has to do with the last thing you could ever possibly fathom or want to hear about, talk about, or see happening with children. And it just so happens that all the influencers, all the politicians are the ones who are doing it. And they're the ones who are keeping you under mind control, thinking that it's not happening. So all of these kids are unaccounted for. You would think that there would be like massive search parties. Like wouldn't they just send all of our mail, everybody possible there to look for these kids, right? Or they're going to say, well, they're all in the rubble. They're all in the ashes. Well, what's taken so long to give us a number? Then if they're in the ashes, they've been completely, there's nothing, there's no evidence, there's no teeth. Because last I checked, shouldn't you be able to find dental records then, right? Because you can't burn, I mean, yeah, no? Oh, okay. So we're finding absolutely nothing. And you're telling me that none of these kids are showing up at school. Why? They're, they don't want to go because of what happened. The parents don't want to send them there because of what happened. Oh, okay. So why are they not reporting on the fact that so many children are missing? Maybe it's because they know that people are going to start to become suspicious as to why it specifically seems like children are missing when obviously there's, yes, there's children there who tragically died and there's adults there who tragically died and homes that tragically burn. But missing is a very interesting word and not showing up for school and then telling us that only a hundred people and counting have perished in this and then using distractions so that people don't focus on where these missing kids are, like sending creepy Joe, maybe the creepiest person on planet earth over to Maui so that he can deflect, talk like an idiot, stumble around, do nothing to help anyone so that people aren't focusing on where these kids are. You see, decades ago, for those of you who are younger, when a kid went missing, everybody in town would get out there and look for the kid. Okay. Now I know that this is an island over there, so it's very hard to get to, but you would think at the very least that our government officials would be sending in more than just FEMA to find him. But instead they send in FEMA. Why? Well, who do you think's rounding them up? Who's rounding this, all these people? Up? Oh, you know, this child has a, this wrong with them. We're going to have to send him to this hospital. The kid never comes back. The parents never see him again. Or, you know, when they were going, trying to leave the town and the police were boarding them into the town who knows who was getting grabbed and who was going where? And people are like, that's a crazy conspiracy. No, it's not. No, it's not. Do you know how many people 2,000 people are, let alone 2,000 children? And again, people are going to come out and they're going to go, this is a conspiracy. Oh, we're pushing a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Because anything that they don't want to fathom or anything they don't want to contemplate or think about or address, they just call it a conspiracy so they can dismiss it because their brains are so feeble that they can't actually think and process this stuff. So they just deflect and they just dismiss. So, oh yeah, it's a conspiracy. Oh yeah, the Hawaii State Department of Education has reported on this. And they'll just 
bring up another topic immediately instead of addressing that. They'll pretend as if this type of a story is coming to you from somebody sitting on TikTok who just wants to make up a story, right? The data is coming from the government, okay? Now, whether the whether our government, uh, you know, not our government, but whether, you know, the CIA and the FBI are aware that the Department of Education is releasing this, I don't know. I would assume maybe they aren't aware and that this story will get scrubbed off the internet in the next few days when they start seeing people like me talking about it. They'll probably send them a thing and say, take that down off your website. Don't ever talk about this again. Because again, things like this can get out. But the question is, when something like this gets out, why is it not a mainstream story? Well, we already know the answer, right? They don't want you to know about how many people are missing there. They don't want you to know how many people are actually burned in the fire there. They don't want you to actually know how the fire really started. That's why they're not talking about it very much. And they're just kind of going, oh, mental health, fire brain. These are things we all need to think about in the future so that, you know, these poor people, they have fire brain. Oh, it's this newest thing. It's a, it's a form of PTSD from fire. Oh, okay. Not from the radiation, not from the, <laughs> the actual weapon that was used on them, from fire smoke. And they just keep bringing these things up about the future, their mental health. Oh, everyone's depressed. How are they going to cope? Instead of talking about where the missing kids are, instead of talking about who's responsible for starting something that looks nothing like a wildfire. Oh, it was electrical cables that went down. Oh, right. Wink, wink. Oh, the winds were so strong. Did it look too strong for any of the video footage I saw? Oh, and you happen to have a direct energy weapon right on the island. Yeah, <laughs> These are all coincidences, right? So obviously anytime anyone hears this story, anyone with a soul, it breaks their heart. Okay, even if you're somebody out there who's young and you don't have kids or you don't have a younger brother, younger sister, a family member with young kids, when you're actually around and you see young children and you actually think about, you know, a, a story like this, I mean, it's very easy to cry and get tear, teared up because they're so innocent and pure so innocent and pure. And that is why Satan and these Luciferians target these children because they're innocent, simple, pure. And they have no remorse for the things that they do. And once people start understanding this, they start realizing who the true enemy is. It's Satan. And it's all the people who follow him and do his bidding. And we're seeing this going on now all over the place. We're seeing stories about missing children again. And I constantly cover this. I talk about it on the website. Even recently, a month or two ago, I covered what happened in Ohio. Hundreds of kids missing. Oh, they're runaways. Oh, they're runaways. We'll locate them. Well, we can't. They ran away. Oh, you can't. Okay, well, I see every single true crime show where you have a camera. And I, you know, I've driven through a red light and I've gotten a ticket. So you have cameras everywhere. And you were able to ping people's phones in murder cases. So why aren't you looking for the kids? And they just ignore it. They ignore it. Now, it's not as rampant as it used to be because they used to actually breathe uh they used to actually do like abductions and things like that we'd always see these stories of things happening around halloween kids going missing i'm sure everybody's heard of that before now they you know they breed them more so than they used to which means you know women strictly their job is to just get pregnant and have kids they never get a birth certificate they're never accounted for they're, they're literally jane and john does and they go into sacrifice we obviously know with planned parenthood what they do but when they do a big grab like this they know that they aren't going to be able to go grab two thousand kids off the streets to do something, but in an event like this, well, they're all missing. Oh, they're all in the fire. Conveniently, right? Absolutely sickening and heartbreaking. Pray for all the children. Pray, pray for all the families in Maui. I mean, seriously, we always throw terms around like pray for, you know, pray for them. They need prayers. I mean, their entire lives have been taken from them. And yes, you could say, well, it's treasure on earth. Okay, well, even if you survived this and your family survived, obviously you should be thankful, but you know, you're losing your home. I mean, everything is upended. Any food you may have had stored, any wall, anything, pictures of your mom, your dad, or family members, pets. I mean, it's absolutely sickening. It's just, it's beyond sickening. And people just go on with their lives and the media goes on talking about Donald Trump's mugshot. And again, there's video about that over on my website, uprisingrevival.com that everybody should check out. But it's just, it's heartbreaking. So my prayers to everybody out there who's been affected, obviously. And uh, we know that this isn't the end of it. We know that more of this stuff is to come, but let's just pray that God protects these children who are missing and unaccounted for, and uh, that they don't turn into the next Jane and John Doe in these sick Luciferians' lives. I thank you guys for being here again. Hope you're all doing well. God bless you as always, and your families.